going to continue our video marketing training this week and we're going to hit equipment and what it takes to start shooting video. Next week we'll get into what videos to shoot and then we'll get into post-production and editing uh, and then we'll get into some of the tricks to hire traffic, calls to action, things like that. But for now, if everybody's here, it's 12 to 16 by my clock, so we can jump right in. Uh, we're not going to do as much screen sharing this week. Uh, I want to focus on equipment. We will do a little bit, uh, but for the most part, it's all just camera stuff this week. So I want to start shooting video. By the way, video, I said no screen sharing, now I just have to do it. I can't help myself. Uh, video, video is the holy grail when it comes to marketing. And I keep trying to disprove that. I keep trying to find a way around it. So a uh, fun example, I launched a campaign on Friday for next Tuesday for an event in San Diego. And you can see that, um, gosh, my cost per lead is is shooting up today uh, to eight dollars so I'm spending eight dollars per person that registers for this event and this is my ad with the video exact same copy it's come down to the ad that I tried I want to say 125 different versions of different pictures different copy different buttons different targets everything you could imagine and where is uh, San Diego event marketing. There we go. Let's take a look at this at my ads that are running for that And you can see I finally gave up some of your ads need to be yeah All my ads needed to be improved. It just weren't working I was spending $13 a lead there and by the way until today, which I'll jump in and look at I was spending six dollars a lead uh, uh, On the videos, but no matter what I do and believe me when you come down here and look at all the versions different pictures different like I said different everything uh, uh uh, same copy as the video ad, different copy, uh, different buttons, different landing. Nope, nope. No matter what I do, I always am able to generate about twice the results with the video that I am with a regular video. And by the way, this video is not even uh, an audio video on this one. It's just some slides and a slideshow. Motion grabs the eye. Uh, start shooting some actual video you're you're just gonna do better I was uh, on yesterday with somebody who had just got started uh, Caitlin Daniels if you're out there uh, had an agent that just did his very first video with a total of twelve dollars of boost he ended up with or he had at that point more than two thousand views on his first video which is just a quick intro video to his target audience, his saved audience, his database, or whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's why we want everybody to do video. If you're <laughs> if you're insecure about video, I'm insecure about video. I still refuse to watch any videos that I shoot. Uh, I will edit the in and out points, but that's it. Even these, never ever have I watched one. I will never watch one. I can't do it. It's too painful. Whatever it and by the way, you notice I had seven leads on the other one, 47 on this one. It's not only are they cheaper, but they're more plentiful. Video. Video is the holy grail. So let's stop the share and jump in and show you some stuff. What does it take to shoot video? Uh, for starters, cameras are no longer necessary when it comes to shooting video. And I know a lot of people, how damn near everybody I know still wants to spend money on big video cameras. They still want something obnoxious and large and cool looking. And the simple fact of the matter is if you go look at things like uh, iPhoneographers or uh, at the Sundance Film Festival, you've got I iPhones that shot the uh, uh, Bentley commercials, uh, iPhones that shot last year's Sundance Film Festival winner, uh, Samsung phones that shot uh, an in theaters movie called Woodwitch the Awakening. More and more full Hollywood productions are using, if not as their main cameras for a lot of their additional cameras, and they use a lot of the footage from cell phones. There's a few things you can't do with cell phones, but nothing that any of us care about. Remember, the super professional production isn't what gets business. It isn't what gets success. Authentic is the new sexy. We just need to have, 
We just need to have decent video. And the truth is, uh, uh, every phone out there today is a full blown 4K super duper video camera. It's all you need. If you've got something that's really modern, it's way more than you need. So here I am with an iPhone. Uh, uh, and I have it plugged in so I can share a screen with you when we're talking about it. But when I shoot video with this, rule number one is, because think about this, when I've got my DSLR, my full video camera, I've got a lens cover, I've got a lens cleaning kit, I keep it perfect. This one, oh no, I got it against my face, I'm setting it down in the spaghetti sauce next to my plate that I spilled at lunch, and it's in my pocket. And so never, ever, ever go anywhere without a little lens cleaning. And you don't want to use your shirt um, uh, or a napkin. And you definitely don't want to use any form of paper uh, product because paper is made from wood. It actually scratches your lens, but oh, that's it. I never, ever, 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 ever shoot, whether I'm using the front or the back, without cleaning my lens. If you do that, you're going to have video that's twice as good as everybody else's. So same thing with your images. Just make sure that you always have, and they make little bitty tiny rags that are just about an inch and a half square that you keep with you, or the ones that you know you get from the eyeglasses section at Walmart or CVS or Walgreens or whatever. Make sure that your lens is clean. So that's rule one. You're always gonna use your phone, you're always gonna use your lens. Your rear facing camera faces away from the screen is always a much better camera. If what you're doing, and there's a few, few circumstances where we actually care about that if what you're doing needs that extra quality then great you're going to use your phone facing this way but the majority of the time I use the front facing camera it's that way when I'm filming I can see myself and make sure that my head's not tilted and that I think that my glasses are straight oh, my hair and I know that I'm squared up and not over here you know doing weird stuff I gotta realize when I put my hand forward so I like to see myself it's still shooting in HD, HD 1080p. Nobody is going to view it at anything above that, especially on the web. Most of the time, it's going to be at 360 that's pixels per inch, dots per inch. Maybe, maybe 720, but no, you just don't need even the full 1080. The 1080 allows you to edit it down. So why even bother with the super duper good camera when you can just use the one that lets you face it and control it and it's so much easier and you don't end up having to reshoot things over and over. So forward facing camera for 95% of what you're doing. The one time I use the rear facing camera is when I'm looking to get closer to something. Now for starters, zoom is a waste on your camera. Never ever zoom. The only zoom you're allowed to use is your legs. You can zoom in, oh, go away, don't make that call. You can zoom in by walking closer or zoom out by walking further away. When you zoom, all you're doing is cropping. If you're gonna crop, crop it later after the fact so you can get it just perfect where you want it and put the edges right here and here and then you can kind of touch the shoulder and come across here. And there we go, and I can get a perfect crop, but don't try to do that on your camera. You're just throwing away pixels, you're throwing away, away resolution. So, the reason we will use the rear camera is if what we're looking for, and I realize that I'm doing one of the things you never want to do, I've got my picture far away from my camera, I keep looking at my picture, instead of you. <clears throat> Eye contact is everything. Uh, uh, that's the one curse of having the screen. If the camera's too close to you and you're looking here, instead of here where the camera is, it'll always appear that I'm doing this. And this is how all your videos will appear to everybody. But if I am look, you can put a post-it note on there, or you might use this one, but always just remember to look at the lens. Look at the lens so that you're making eye contact with the person, because you're always making a video for one person. You're talking to one person, you're pretending there's one person there, and there you go. So I'm doing that, I'm shooting my video, uh, uh, looking straight at the lens. Um, uh, oh, back to when would I use this? If I'm trying to get B-roll, B-roll is those extra images. I'm shooting a video at a pizza parlor and I want to show everybody eating pizza and having fun or whatever. I might use this one because I want to get as far away from the room as I can. Way back in the corner, I hold my phone back here in the corner over my head and then I will shoot a few seconds of video as wide as I can. That way I can zoom in after the fact. If 
I'm going to be zooming in or if something's far away from me, instead of using zoom, I flip over and use this camera so that I'm shooting it in much higher resolution, 4K, gotta make sure you turn on the 4K. But now I'm able to zoom in without losing quality or resolution. I can still be HD video, even though I'm cropping a bunch of it off and, and stretching the video back out. And then most of the time, if you're doing B-roll, you're trying to get little videos or clips or pictures or something to put in your videos, but it's not just a talking head for a minute and a half. Nobody wants to watch a talking head for a minute and a half. You want to drop in some images that support what you're saying. So what I do and what I try to get people to do is use this camera, make sure your lens is clean, get way back and just take a picture. And the picture will be ultra high res, way, way more than your video. And then with that ultra high res video in post or whoever's doing your editing, they put what's called a Ken Burns effect. They'll take and just take a piece of the picture and then have it move across or have it pan up or have it zoom in. So it gives it motion and it looks like video even though it's just a still because shooting B-roll is something most of us don't want to try out of the gate. So whenever I go and let's say I'm shooting that interview with the owner of the pizza parlor, I'm going to shoot my interview with them, blah, 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 the whole thing. And then I'm going to go take five or six pictures different angles, maybe the outside with the sign and the door, some people walking in, the guy throwing the pizza dough in the air. But I'm gonna shoot some big stills, but I'm gonna make sure they're wide enough that I've got a lot of extra footage so that even though it's the guy throwing the, the pizza dough in the air, well, now I can have him moving across or zooming in or panning down or something like that because I have that high res photo. So for each video that I shoot, I try to have at least five pictures to go with that video that can be dropped into the video. Sometimes I find those pictures online. I go to Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S uh, dot com or Unsplash dot com, places where you can get good high res quality photos for free. Uh, and sometimes I break down and go to Shutterstock or Photo Dune or something like that and buy my photos to go in there and they cost me a couple bucks each. Uh, if you're a Canva user, and everybody really should be if you're not a Photoshop person, um, uh, you pay a dollar, maybe two for a picture. But there you go. I'm going to use the phone. I'm going to clean my lens. Next rule. First, always clean your lean, uh, leans. Always clean your lens. Next rule. Make sure that you never, ever, ever, ever hold your phone when you're shooting video. It's the biggest mistake everybody makes other than forgetting to clean their lens, is I try to film, and no matter how I brace my arms or do or whatever, I'm trying to make it be still, okay, it's still gonna have shape, it's still gonna have movement, it's still gonna look unprofessional. If you, if you wanna have good looking video, your video needs to be held still, it needs to be in a tripod. Man, I gotta go buy a tripod, a full pony, I gotta carry that around? No, not necessarily. Um, how about this? Uh, got lots of stuff here. When you go to, and it's on the Resource Center or my Facebook page, you can find a link to a Amazon wish list that has things like this. Uh, this, um, is this, yeah, this is a good one. Um, it's a $10 selfie pole uh, uh, with a cell phone mount, and there's lots of different kinds of cell phone mounts. And I prefer the ones that screw down to the spring loaded ones. The spring loaded ones are really stiff and hard to get on your phone. They're more prone to pop the phone out because of that spring pressure that's on there. I love this one uh, 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 that is spring-loaded the opposite way, so I squeeze it down on my phone and then lock it in place. It also has a cold shoe mount up there, so you can put a light or a microphone. But I put my phone in here, and all I do, set it up like this, clamp it down, and there we go. Whoops. Uh, get it clamped down, there we go. And now I, you know, I do anything I want with this and it's the phone's not gonna come out. And it's a selfie pole with a little tripod on the bottom. And I just use the little bitty tripod. And this is a, I wanna say a 46 inch selfie pole so I can't set it on the ground and stand up and shoot video. I have to put it on a table, I have to put it on a chair. I can always find something to put it on. And then I adjust the height to whatever height I want to get it right at or just above eye level. Uh, uh, you might even go a little bit higher, so it's shooting down at you, it'll trim you up a little bit and give you a better look. Notice how people always take selfies like this. Um, you tend to look a little better, a little thinner. Uh, um, 
uh, but at least at eye level, because uh, again, you want to be looking the camera in the eye when you're doing it. So all mine, all my videos, this is my rig. I shoot with a selfie pole and a little tripod. And the tripod, yeah, you can get smaller ones that aren't so big, uh, um, not quite as stable, but they work just great. Um, uh, I can use a full-size tripod. Let me show you what I mean phone out of here real quick uh, and this is my go-to when I'm doing video with people I will use a full tripod and I like one that has a lot of segments in the legs uh, uh, this Dolica I think it's probably about 80 bucks but that way it compresses up to very very small and the legs actually fold all the way upside down so that the whole thing is only 12 inches fits in my bag even though it's a full height and I can keep going higher tripod I can shoot from the ground I can do whatever super stable the legs can be adjusted even for uneven ground I gotta put one of them real short on a boulder or something like that and I use a full tripod this rig that you see here and it is just a cell phone if you look close it's whoa there we go it's just a um, uh, just an iPhone um, or Android, I'm not sure what that one is. Um, but I put it in this uh, uh, e-image e phone holder. And the main reason for that, if I am gonna shoot mobile video, it's got great handles on it so that I can hold it and really do get a lot steadier. Trick, anytime you have to get motion video or you wanna walk and follow somebody, never hold your phone. Always wanna have something to hold it if you can, but whether you do or not, even if I had to just stick it in this rig, I would stick my phone in this rig, and then I would extend this down so that I have a lot of weight down low. See, if this moves an inch, this part at the top is barely moving at all. You can barely see it, whereas you'll wiggle all over if you're just holding the phone. But if you have a big counterbalance weight hanging down, and I can hold it like this, which I recommend when I am filming. So if i got to film and follow somebody or walk or I want to do a sideways pan across the room, I'll hold this, and I get it just as steady as I can, and then I'll walk. And even though I'm walking, I can hold this very, very stable. But at the very least, I'm going to have it hanging down. When I get a full tripod below it, now I really get some stability out of it. This rig, besides helping me with the stability, the main reason I use it, just to be really candid, is I use it. Let me just bring it down so you can see the whole thing. Um, I use this so that I don't look as lame when I'm doing an interview video. Because if I show up to do an interview with somebody or to shoot a video someplace, especially if I've said, you know, hi, I'm Bill with Homes and Life TV and I'm here to do, well, if I'm Bill with Homes and Life TV and I show up and I just got a cell phone on a selfie pole, they're gonna be like, lame. So I put my phone in a rig like this, and there's quite a few of them. This one's $69 from eImage or Ecamm. Uh, uh, goes all the way up to the beast grip, which is almost 200 bucks, and it's a full rig. And I want to say that one, um, uh, that's the one that they use for like the, the Bentley commercials I was talking about, but they're all the same thing. They hold your phone, they allow full lenses, regular camera lenses, 37 millimeter lenses, so I can have this one's a wide angle. Uh, uh, here I have a uh, uh, zoom, this one's a, what is it, two time zoom. And I have different lenses for different purposes. And now if you want to play serious photographer, I can just change out my lenses. It has the cold shoe mounts, several of them all over it. So I can put a light on it. Uh, I can put a microphone on it if I want a little shotgun mic. Uh, if you're shooting and your audio is more your source, if you are going to be more than about uh, four max, five feet away from the camera, you don't have to be even an interview because the lens is so wide angle on a phone. Two of you can get shoulder to shoulder and you can shoot an interview with somebody at five feet and still be okay with just the regular camera microphone as long as there's not a lot of outside no noise. A zoom mic, any kind of long skinny mic like this one uh, or this little miniature zoom that's made for a cell phone from Rode. Um, I think this is called the Rode Micro Mini for 50 bucks. Uh, also comes with a big it's called a dead cat, the big furry thing you see on microphones. It's to block wind noise, great for outdoor, windy, moving, whatever. But a zoom mic picks up sound in a narrow tunnel. So it's gonna pick up sound just right there in front of you, and it won't pick up all the side noises as much. And it'll let you be a little further away. So this is what I use most of the time. 
<laughs> along with a very small battery operated light. And now that they're LED, these things are insanely bright. Um, and I can turn them up or I can turn them down. I can set it have just the light I want. Between you and me, I rarely need the light. You can tell it's hardly even changing my video much at all as soon as the camera adjusts. Phones are so good at camera or lighting adjustment that you really rarely need the light. Sometimes if you've got harsh light coming straight down, you'll have shadows under your eyes, under your chin. It's just a little too dark. You don't want those heavy shadows. You'll use this as a fill light to kind of fill that up and make it look better. But my main purpose for this between you and me is I want this looking you right in the eye when I'm doing an interview with you and making you squint and it makes it feel more professional and more intimidating. So I've got my heavy light, now let me turn that down, turn that off, and I've got my big professional looking rig, microphones, and I can mount this full pony mic on there, or I could get just a regular microphone and put on there, whatever I want. Uh, I can put bigger lights, these lights will stack together so I can do a lot of them if I want, or uh, sometimes, and by the way, everything for me these days, all goes on a selfie pole, it's just a selfie pole, same as before. Uh, uh, this is like a $30 larger LED light. Oh, and I put a stop box on there just to make it diffuse the light a little bit if you're too close to it. But it's just a plain LED light, same as that, just bigger. I've got one over on the wall that's four times as big as that. LED lights are so cheap, so easy to use. You can just put them on a selfie pole with a little mini tripod. Uh, by the way, if you're mobile and you want more tripod and you want more stability, uh, uh, love these little rigs. Uh, for nine bucks, I get, there's my tripod, and I go like that, and kind of like tent poles. Now I've got a great big tripod. I'll mount my selfie pole on top of that. That'll be my base to make it really, really stable. And then I have my light or my phone or my microphone, whatever I want on top of that. But for the most part, you're not going to need any of that. Put it out there, people always ask, they want to know what to do, they want things to be more professional. I also mount microphones on them. You can see here's a selfie pole with a microphone mounted on it. Uh, this one has a wireless transmitter. If you want to go wireless, really no need for it, but some people like to, I like to, I like to have the whole wireless mic feel, and, and it pops out just like any musical microphone. The wireless units are a little more expensive. You can't go too cheap on those. You'll spend a couple hundred bucks, but for the microphone, I like these shotgun mics. It's on my wish list on Amazon, on Marketing 3, or on my Facebook. Uh, $24.99, I want to say, for this. Uh, it has a normal and a telly. Uh, normal is going to be a little bit wider, and telly is going to be really, really focused. Uh, I buy microphone flags, which are these little, if you just type in microphone flag on eBay or Amazon, you'll have hundreds of them. I think I paid four bucks for these, and then you just print stickers and put your stickers on there with your logo or whatever you want. Here with Cave Creek Today or uh, uh, San Jose Life, uh, uh, San Jose Homes and Living, Homes and Life TV, Maricopa, whatever the city is. But these microphones are good for doing interviews because I can hold it and I've got my flag and it looks professional. And if I didn't have black on black, it'd show up a little more. But one of the things you want to remember when you're using a microphone is to always um, make sure that you're the same distance from your mouth that you are from your subject. So if I do this, hey, it's Bill Hillistat, and I'm here today to talk to you about stuff and the stuff. And then I come over to my guest and I say, okay, here you go, Mr. Guest. And it's over here like, well, they're going to be real quiet. I'm going to be real loud. So you want to say 12 inches, 12 inches, 12 inches, 12 inches. Really hard for me to do, by the way. 280, you can't pull it off. I'll actually plug this in, and a lot of people like to use the microphones just for the, the, the look, the effect, the flag, my logo. I love seeing my logo. Remember Cricket, we always show him as our poster child. This is what he used for the entire first year was this flag and this mic um, before he upgraded to a full reporter microphone. Same flag, but uh, uh, he can do this and pull it off, and he's da 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 and it works. Well, I can't. So if I am using a mic, I'll usually put the little shotgun on there or put another shotgun on there, a bigger one if I'm going to be further away. I'll run the wire over to it and just leave it unplugged and pretend I'm using a microphone. My sound sounds perfect. Nobody knows. I'm golden. Uh, so if you are using interview microphones, uh, for 24 bucks, you can't go wrong. It's a great place to start. The one tip I'll give you 
they uh, almost all microphones are powered. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, I got my wire plugged in. I got to unplug first. Ah, there we go. Uh, it, take the trip. Oh, no, this one takes a double A battery. Always have extra batteries because no matter how non ADD you are, you're going to forget and leave it turned on and kill the battery. So I always have spare batteries in my bag when I'm using mics like this. If you want to go a little bit higher quality than a, you know, funky Chinese $24 whatever. Uh, here we go. The iRig HD. Uh, uh, love this microphone. These are $89, I want to say, on eBay. What's beautiful about these, it's just micro USB here. So I was plugging it into my computer, so I had a USB cable, but normally it comes with a micro USB to lightning, so I can plug it into my iPhone if I want to plug it into my iPhone, but it'll plug in direct. There's no batteries. It's got a gain or a volume control right here, and I can still slip my flag on there and have the flag on there and do my whole interview thing, and it's made to use with a cell phone, and that's the iRig HD. It's in the list. You can't miss it. And then finally, for microphones, my personal favorite, uh, what I recommend to everybody, there is no way you will ever get better sound than this without spending stupid money and having a mixer board and everything else, but you're going to get better sound than anybody's computer is going to put out. You're going to get better sound than you need out of a lavalier, a lapel mic that you clip on. And normally you run the wire, you know, up the back of your shirt and then you pull it out and clip it on. And you always see people, and it kind of looks cool to have the mic clipped on there somewhere. Uh, but I clipped that on, and I like this one from Movo, M-O-V-O. -O. If you say microphone, uh, or excuse me, lapel microphone, Movo, uh, 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 cell phone, whatever, uh, or Movo interview is another good one. And it's on the list. You can go look on the list. The beauty of this one is it has... Um, uh, three jacks, it's got its own little splitter. It comes with two microphones, and you can plug a headphone into one if you wanna then listen to your audio afterwards, make sure your levels are good and you sound good. But it has two lavaliers with enough cable that you can clip one on, clip one on your guest, you can do an interview, but these create spectacularly good sound. There's lots of other ones, but lavaliers where everybody should start. It's just if you're doing interviews or something and you wanna have the mic, some people like it or want to do karaoke on the side. I don't know. But, but the lavalier is where you want to start. So great. We've got a phone. Our phone is mounted. If we're trying to look cool, we can put it in something to make it look cool. So it doesn't matter that we're just using a phone. Because a lot of people, a lot of people don't want to use their phone just because it doesn't look cool. Um, by the way, the one that I always recommend, this one that's the selfie pole, all one unit. It's $19 up there on the list. Um, can't remember the name of the company, but let me get rid of that. It's just holding my light. Uh, it comes with a Bluetooth remote built in. Uh, this comes with a Bluetooth remote that mounts right here, and I don't have it. If you look at Bluetooth remotes, they're they're three dollars off for four or five bucks. You can get a selfie pole and a Bluetooth remote, but you can get a good quality one. This one's fifty-four inches tall uh, with the remote. And the, the, the clamp, it actually comes with this one, which again, I can screw down to hold my phone really tight. And now I've got a Bluetooth remote. I turn it on, my phone will see it. I say pair, it's paired. From that point forward, I'm able to just use the button to start and stop. And one of the biggest problems we have is we're up there doing this, click, and then our phone's shaking around and we gotta wait for it to stabilize. And then we're talking and then, ah, oh, I mess up. I gotta go back up, I gotta go back up. Or worse yet, we just keep talking. Now we've got to, half an hour of video and there's a one and a half minute clip in the middle of it. No, with this it's just, are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Hey, it's Bill Hillis Dad. And I'm here to talk to you about something today because I wanted to talk to you about something. And I just go, I mean, when I'm done, strike a pose and I always start with the pose, end with the pose, because we've got to have that first frame and that last frame. And you hit stop. By the way, if you'll notice when I'm moving around and doing things, it's a little more blue now. And then it's a little more red. And it's a little, all cameras, auto adjust the exposure, there you go, just turn more red. They auto adjust the white balance. So on your phone, like if you're an iPhone user, if you just touch the screen and hold it, it'll pop up and say AE lock, auto exposure lock. And then you can move it up and down for the, the light and then you know sideways and same thing on a, on a 
Android, they all have exposure locks. Make sure that you get your exposure where you want to be. You focus on somebody, focus on yourself. But if you're having this problem like we're having, if we were really trying to record something here, I would have it locked so that it doesn't keep changing based on my moving around. By the way, one other side tip on the lighting. If you move a lot, if you're one of these talk with your hands people, um, that will blur because again, the camera's slowing down the shutter speed in order to let more light in, in order to make my very dim room work, which there's a little storm outside and it just turned all of my LED Wi-Fi lights blue. So <laughs> that's why we're so blue right now. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. It happens from time to time. Um, but eh, that'll make this blur. And if you were to stop the frame, you would see there's big blurs on my hand and streaks. If you're going to shoot without a light and it's not very bright out, you're almost always fine, but you want to not be real moving. <laughs> be, be still. If you're going to move, if it's an action shot, if you're going to be walking, whatever, that's when a light comes in. A light, when it pushes more light to the camera, it can open and close the shutter faster, which will stop the motion, which will keep this from creating blurs. Uh, Dang, we've hit just about everything. By the way, you don't have to use your cell phone. Uh, I use the webcam like I am now on my computer quite often. If you're going to do that, try to get just some books. I have a little stand, like a, a bed stand, you know, to put your laptop on with legs that I can adjust the height on. But you want your camera eye level, so I'm here. Not, you know, uh, uh, normally people are doing this and, and looking down or whatever, but they're thinking it looks weird because you're looking down at your computer. So uh, uh, you can use it. Make sure you get it up. Always make sure you clean the lens. Computer screen's even worse than your phone probably. Webcams. I use this webcam all the time because I always have my computer closed because I have a big monitor. So I can't use the camera on my computer. So I use a webcam, the Logitech HD. Uh, uh, 920, 930, uh, uh, or Brio is their 4K, but the, you want to use the Logitech, it's just the best. Stereo microphones, great sound, up to five or six feet, no problem. Super wide angle. The Brio actually has different angles if you want to zoom in. Same thing, I put it on a little mini selfie pole here that is just for my desktop, and I can adjust this, and I can go to whatever height I want. Um, Lock down. There we go. And we'll just keep going up and up and up. There we go. So I can get it right at my eye level and have it pointing at me and plugged into my computer. And that way, and what I do is I put it right up in the middle of my monitor. It kind of blocks my screen, but if I'm looking at my monitor, at least I'm still kind of looking at you. Um, these are great. These are great. On a conference table, uh, uh, for those of you that do the web conferences and the trainings, these are what I recommend. These in the Logitech BCC 950. Uh, uh, which is a full conference camera and remote control for 200 bucks. Those are about $69, $79. Um, but that's it. Uh, uh, you can use a webcam. You can use your laptop. You can use your phone. Always make sure you have a Bluetooth remote because you want to strike a pose. Hey, blah, 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 video thing, blah, 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 whatever, stop and then stop it, and now I don't have to go worry about the trip, and that way when I screw up time after time after time, uh, uh, I don't worry about going, and then I got, ah, <laughs> hey, and then I'll sit and just on and off, on and off, on and off, but then I end up with just one good video, and I don't have to worry about all those others, and delete them. Uh, but never, ever shoot without a Bluetooth. Uh, uh, it will make it much easier on you. Uh, and you won't have all the shaking from hitting your whatever. But uh, for $19, if you were to grab the unit I showed you, whichever one, I've lost them, grab that unit and start shooting, uh, uh, whether you're doing them in your open houses or you're doing them for listings or whatever. You've got the Bluetooth. You've got your phone. You're cool. That's all you need. If you want to take it up one notch, my next investment would be the Movo, the, the little lavalier microphone. Uh, and now I think those are $30, so I'm all in for 50 bucks. If you want to go do the interviews, yeah, I get the flag for another five. I got another 30 on that microphone. So instead of the Movo lavalier, I'm using that. Well, now I'm all in for unit 20, 
microphone plus flag, 30, a couple batteries, 50, 55 bucks, and I'm shooting spectacular, spectacularly high quality video. And with practice, it just gets better and better. And if I'm doing the interviews and I really want to look pro, yeah, $69, I think another 15 for the light. Now I'm up to maybe a buck 20 and I got me a full professional rig. Uh, and I usually just mount that big microphone up there with the flag on it and everything else. I even I don't have one here with me. I even make press passes, you know, laminated press badges. And I'll clip that on there and, and man, it's professional. So there you go. That's the basics of video. Cell phone, clean lens, always on a stand, always with the Bluetooth. That's all you really need to remember. Uh, uh, framing, and we'll get into the more of the shooting next week, but just give you this last one. This isn't really a good frame. I would put it about right here. You want your head right up against the top. Everybody always wants to put their head in the middle, and now I've just got all this white space up there. If my eyes are in the middle of the screen, this is not a good video. That's just waste. Uh, try to get it there. Don't get too much body. Uh, uh, at the most, cowboy. The cowboy is the tip of a cowboy's gun. They call that cowboy framing. So if you go down to like mid thigh, that's about the biggest. You never do feet and everything. It's just too much on a computer, especially. But most of the time, mid chest, head, you're good. Uh, if you're doing screen capture video where you're really showing the screen and you're in the bubble, then you might zoom way in and and you know just have your head and the stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's kind of it. Let me see if we got any questions here. Uh, where are we sending these videos? YouTube and then posting to social media sites. Great question. I shot a video. What do I do with it? The rules are, and I everywhere is my best answer, in that you should always have all your stuff on YouTube because you're building a YouTube channel. Google owns YouTube. Google loves YouTube. Google favors YouTube. Separate training where we'll talk about how to make your videos rank. But the rule of thumb is YouTube is where you go for rankings. You want people to find you in search on YouTube. And that's the best place, period, bar none, for you to rank. Uh, uh, we'll show you how to shoot a video of a listing and have it rank number one uh, uh, within a day on YouTube when we get to that. But you don't get a lot of traffic on YouTube. You see five-year-old videos from clients that still only have 30 or 40 views. It's there for authority, it's there for ranking. Facebook, and you have to upload natively to Facebook, you actually upload it to Facebook, that's where you go for traffic, and that's where you'll get hundreds or thousands of views. That's where you can put that little boost on it, $5 boost, 10 $20 boost, and it'll really push it out there and give you the big views. Remember, it's gotta to go to your page, not your profile. So uh, my videos go to YouTube, they go to Facebook, and I'm just getting ready to throw in Twitter and uh, uh, LinkedIn and start doing some stuff over there as well. But Facebook is is 90% of it no matter what. Uh, like I said, YouTube's kind of a different play, a different angle. I'm trying to become the authority. Uh, separate training. For now, I suggest you just use Facebook uh, and starts and stops. Another quick tip for you, side pro tip. Go follow three people. Go follow three people uh, uh, that are doing a good job of this. And let me just show you what I mean. Uh, if I go to YouTube and you can see that I'm using uh, Chrome as my browser here, Chrome lets you install extensions. So if I go to the Chrome extensions, just type in Chrome extensions and pull it up. And, and then I search for YouTube, it'll give me this extension. So let me just go to YouTube. And the extension is a plugin because YouTube doesn't have all the same sorting capabilities that it used to. So now if I was looking for real estate, enter, it's going to come up with all of these at random that it thinks, and that's not what I care about. What I care about is, and I'll go over here to this little filter, and this plugin added all these extra filters. So I can say, show me channels. I only want to see channels. And I want to sort them by view count. I want to know the most viewed real estate channels there are. And now I've got all of the channels with all of their subscribers. And I can go through and I can look at these people. And I can check out these channels. And my suggestion is subscribe to three people whose stuff you like. Really, that's what it boils down to. 
if you like their stuff, even if they don't have the most, don't just go with the ones at the top. I'll go pages down. I want real stuff. Uh, uh, but you should be subscribing. Everybody, everybody should follow, and you're welcome, Jessica, but everybody should follow Jessica Riffle Edwards. She's the most viewed realtor on YouTube. And yeah, she's only got 12,000 subscribers, but she's got 520 videos. She has it down. She's authentic. She's genuine. She does these funky, uh, uh, spoofy music videos from time to time, and they're always viral and get tons of views. But the bread and butter for her is these basic videos. And her studio is, as you'll notice, most of the time, it's the front seat of her car. She puts her phone in a cradle. I have one in my car. My phone always sits up there for nav or whatever, but I film constantly in my car, just wherever she's parked in between. And look, she doesn't do a thumbnail. She doesn't do intro stingers. There's no graphics. There's no editing. Cuts the in and out point or uses a Bluetooth to start and stop. And with that, she just shoots these very basic videos. And she's got a little something in her eye, but she doesn't care. Or maybe it's sunny. And there you go. That's it. Awesome. She's real. She's authentic. People like her. If you're looking for topics, she's a great place to go to look for topics. And you can see which topics seem to get the most comments, which ones seem to. But follow three people. So there's your side pro tip. Follow three people and uh, uh, use what they use. So wait, I got a chat thing here. My Logitech webcam came with its own tripod. Really? Damn, I didn't. Sweet. <laughs> By the way, if you're getting a, it, it doesn't have to be a Logitech, but if you're getting a webcam, that's the one thing that I insist on, is make sure that it has a tripod mount. Uh, uh, yours came with a tripod, which is really cool, but if it doesn't have, and that's true for just about everything, this little hole with the threads, they call them a quarter 20. It's a quarter inch, 20 threads per inch. But if it doesn't have a quarter 20 tripod mount, you can't put it on a tripod. You can't put it on a selfie pole. It won't work. Uh, uh, so make sure that even if you get a cheap one, because then if not, I'm trying to fold out the thing and balance it on there. And go, okay, all right, yeah, that's good. I want it mounted, uh, uh, and that way I just use my laptop and my, and my, and I've shot as many videos on that as I have on any form. It works great. Uh, again, make sure you clean your lens. Uh, oh, another cool side tip, and I'll shut up, I swear. Um, when you're doing this, um, yeah, this one's a, a, I don't know, none of these are good examples right now. When I put a real tripod on the bottom of this, the big real tripod, and you loosen the head on the tripod, the little knob, whatever it has, so the head is just loose and floppy. Well, now the tripod will just hang down. If I'm holding the selfie pole like this, the tripod is hanging down. I might extend the legs one section so they're a little longer, but I don't want them touching the ground. And they're folded up. And then I put my phone out here on the end, and I fold it up like this, and now I've got my phone looking at me like a regular selfie pole. Hey, I'm doing a selfie. Only if I try to walk or move or film myself, I'm all over the place. This is the shakiest, worst video you're ever going to get. You put that tripod on the end, hanging down as a big counterbalance, kind of loose, and now I don't have to hold it up. When I grab this, and I'll find just the right spot where it's perfectly balanced because of all the weight of the tripod. And now I can hold this, and I can walk through a house and say, hey, come on, let's do a virtual tour. Or I can virtually show a home using Skype or FaceTime yeah, I've got a snowbird in Canada that wants to look at a house here in Scottsdale. I'm going to walk them through the whole house going, come on, follow me. And I might hold it backwards so that my, it's like having a camera crew, follow your own. Come on, take a look. Da, 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 da. Notice over here and look over there. And, da, 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 da. and I'm just, and I can see what's on the screen. And we'll make that a separate training someday. How to do the virtual tour as if you have a camera crew with you. Or if you're out at an event, but having the selfie pole with a tripod on it is awesome. And then when you get to a spot where you want to stop, you just stand it up, set the tripod down, and then step away and talk to them. And now it's standing over there like your camera crew. So there you go. Fun side tip today. Equipment, how to get started. Start shooting videos. Just start shooting videos. All I can tell you is your first 50 are going to suck, no matter what. My 532nd one sucks, but hell, they work. I get hundreds of thousands of views. Um, <laughs> I just won't watch them myself. I find them so offensive. Just start shooting. They'll get better. They'll get better. They'll get better. 
one a day. Can you shoot one a day? Just shoot, even if you throw them away, even if you don't do anything. Just find cool articles and just shoot intros. Hey, really cool articles. Blah, 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 blah. Click, check it out. Uh, let me know what you thought. That's it. Move right there. All my thing. I just did it. Took a minute. Um, just to get you started, you just want to you want to become a video person, and it's got nothing to do with good looks or being trim or having hair on your head or anything else. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, it's just a matter that you got to do it. All right. I don't see any other questions. I will get this posted. Uh, uh, sorry again for last week's technical difficulty. Zoom was down for all of us. When we all went to Zoom, we just got error codes. That's all I got. Got a lot of emails saying people got the same. I turned around and just shot my video real quick uh, and posted it up to both Facebook and the Marketing 3 Smart Sheet. Uh, uh, kind of liked the training last week because it was getting us started in this video path on what videos to shoot, how to title them, and talked a little bit more about your YouTube stuff on that one. Now, by the way, if you're real close to the camera, like right now I am two and a half feet from my camera. That's how wide they are. As I said, I can even get two people in here two and a half feet away, and I have no microphone. If I was shooting a video for real, I'd put on my lab, and I'd have my voice would be much, but it doesn't matter. We're all friends, right? But the one thing you got to be careful of when you're really close is hand gesture because if I go ah, it looks like I'm da, 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 and and you get this weird distortion thing because you're so close and when things get you know too close. So if you're going to be showing things like I'm doing, I probably should have gotten uh, uh, at least yeah I don't know move back. There we go. The chair. Um, there we go. At least at four feet now I can not look like some sort of weird distorted trapezoidal creature. Uh, and I adjust my lights and whatever, but this is probably where I would shoot it if I was really doing a tutorial. I'd bring the zoom down, and there we go, and now I can actually show you stuff and whatnot. But, uh, questions? Going once? Going twice? Oh, one popped up. Uh, do you have these trainings on archive? This is my first time watching, but I want to see more. Well, thank you very much. Um, yes, they are all archived. You can go to my Facebook page, uh, uh, Hillestad LLC, um, and they're all archived. Uh, resources, documents, downloads, tutorials, links are all in the notes tab. Um, all the videos, if you're on a phone, are just in the videos, or if you're on a desktop, there's actually a training archive tab. It just doesn't show up. Extra tabs don't show up in Facebook on mobile. Um, but on desktop, there is a training archive tab. Also, you can go to Marketing 3. Let me just get rid of this and show you real quick because this is kind of confusing. That's why I started putting everything up at Facebook. But if you go to Marketing 3, it's going to just take you through to this um, smart sheet, which is just my uh, uh, social mastery, what is it, resource library. <laughs> this started as my outline for these trainings, and then uh, I just started putting up, yeah, I want to migrate my Facebook profile into a page so all my friends become followers. I want to set up a target audience of uh, uh, left-handed Buick driving millennials who make over 100000 a year. Uh, <laughs> whatever you want. Um, uh, you name it, uh, a branding. I want to build my brand. What about logos, colors, things like that? How do I really brand myself? Uh, it's all here. Trainings and, and whatnot are down at the bottom, all the archive. Last week, what videos should I shoot? Um, let's fix that. Sorry, uh, uh, ADB kicking in. And uh, what videos should I shoot? Uh, uh, this is misspelled. Uh, yeah, lead conversion, whatever. So there's all the trainings. Here's all your resources. And the Amazon wish list I mentioned is this link right here. And I will go in and update this after today. But this is this is all the goodies on Amazon I like. Uh, as you go back, a lot of my written reviews on and described them. Um, the problem is people keep buying these things and it removes them. So I got to add them back to the list and I got to rewrite the review. Um, but this is this is the starter point right here. You get this or something like this. It has the Bluetooth. It has a very tall 54 and a third inch tall tri or selfie pole. The tripod's built in. It's not a real good selfie pole for doing selfies. Um, as you can see, it's just one unit. But everything for 19 bucks. Oh, look, this is up to 79. It was 69. And then hey, I 
go with other ones. The mellow mount doesn't come with the lens. I got to buy the lens separate, but same lights, microphones, whatever. Uh, here's another one that has a nice big handle. If you're used to holding an old school DSLR, there's your microphone for $24.99, $4.49 for your flags. Uh, uh, if you want to put your flags on there, uh, this is the same one, but it's not available from them anymore. So I had to redo it. And then down is just other stuff for more advanced. There's the microphone that, whoop, no, no, that's not it. Um, like it. There it is. That's the mic mini, the $58 one that I mentioned that I've got right here. I just don't have the dead cat on it, the fuzzy thing um, uh, that you saw in the photo up above. Uh, but that's an amazingly good mic. Oh, and there's your Movo. Movo Executive. Oh, it's $40. I lied. Um, prices go up. That funny tripod I showed you. My favorite selfie pole that I use because it fits in my bag, the one that I told you is 54, it's a little bit big. I go with this one because it's shorter and smaller. And when I take it apart, <clears throat> and I just fold this down. Um, but yeah, now it's nice and small. Look at that. I put that in my backpack or my briefcase or my bag, and I've got my studio, that, and my Movo lavalier. That's my entire portable photography, videography studio. Um, that's all I use. And then there's your light for $16. Uh, that might be, yeah, that's the small one like I use. Here's one that's a little bit bigger if you want brighter. I just don't like carrying the big thing, but it is a much brighter light. Um, uh, and we'll get into things like if you do a lot of motion video, you want to use a gimbal so you can move around. It'll always be perfectly steady. Um, so I've got several gimbals and what to look for and how to use those. But there you go. There's your there's your resources. There's your equipment training. Let me just peek and see. No extra questions. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for attending. I will get this posted by the end of the day and get it shared. Please share it with everybody else and uh, send them to cmg.social if they want to register for these. Uh, and we will also start, and we've got the email list put together, we're going to start putting out some extra trainings and tutorials, and we'll send you stuff. We're doing more live events and live trainings, and we're starting the whole video training series uh, uh, actually next week, so hopefully coming to your area, and we'll do that. Uh, but please do, share this with everybody you know. We love doing these trainings. It's no cost, just like people to benefit from it, so please do pass this along. Thanks for now. I will see you guys next i'll see you next wednesday but i'm going to put out an announcement keep an eye out for it we're going to change the time because we're doing so many events we need wednesdays for events we're going to move these to mondays start the week off with a little marketing fraud uh, uh so keep an eye out for that there will be a new time for these but they will always be posted recorded that's it thanks everybody see you next week